when you get this money, you do all your design, everything, you have to go to the community. You have to. And I will tell you a story. Um, 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 in the case of if you are working in forest reserves, like Rumpi Hills, like Kimbi Forest, like Nunako, or in community forests, never, 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 never you get into a community forest. Um, um, Nathan will testify with me. Never you get into a community forest or into, into a forest reserve without passing through the chief. Never, never, never. Something may happen to you. That is their forest. So the first issue in the community forest, you go to the chief palace because that's not your village. In a national park, it's fine. With all your documents, you meet the conservator. With all your documents, you meet the conservator. You pay the insurance fee. You are gone. Nobody tax you. But, but this is in Munyange. So we went there with whiskey. We have to hand the whiskey to the chief, to the, the chief. He makes a libation and paves the way for you people to go. And note, people always tell me that, hey, Moses, that is expensive. Why do you go with bars of whiskeys into the forest? Those whiskeys are like African blessings. <laughs> and and, and they are the keys to and and and, and, um, um, and five years ago, five years ago, I had a project in Mount Kupe in Kupe village. I went, I went there and they told me a story that some, some um, the British, they came here and they said they should pay, they should pay, um, um, I think, five thousands. They refused, they said, no, I know this forest, I've been working here for years, I'm not paying. They went to the forest and one of their guys got missing. They came back in the middle of the night, pleaded with the chief. The chief have to, have to leave a group and, and tell them, okay, now I've discussed with my people, you people should go, you will meet the man at the, at the entrance of, of, of the town. They just went and met the guy there. Yeah, 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 the white guy. So be careful. Yeah, because did he refuse to pay the fire that I know the forest. They refuse. So and um, and um, also, oh, I stole this picture from one of our trips in Fungum. <laughs> so see, see, see. To be honest, if you want to continue in biodiversity studies, be prepared. It's not a bird of rosary. There are times you move on rugged roads like, like he showed us. It's not a bird of roses, I tell you. Be prepared to, be, to go on bikes, to go in a boat, in a small boat that they are pulling like this, and um, 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 be prepared for all this, this sort of movement. Jacob and I were on this bike for about four hours. The day we were moving to Fungum, and four hours the day we, the, the day we came back. I even one of the bikes tumbled with me two times. So, be prepared if you want to actually continue in this field. No, 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 one bike each. <laughs> These are two bikes, so I was on my own. <laughs> so, so, yes. So, 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 um, 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 and, and be careful. You don't go, in, go to a community and you feel that you are the little gorilla. Be careful, you don't. You have to be, you have to, you have to be, you have to be social, put some social ethics. Talk with the king, talk with the king wife, talk with people in the village in a friendly way. You don't, something may happen to, happen to you, that's not their village. <laughs> Collecting <coughs> taxonomy data. As I, as, I, as I earlier mentioned, look, look, this is the road after, this is the road after Dikumebalwe. This is the road after Dikumebalwe, between Dikumebalwe and Madie, Madie River. So just expect to see things like this. It's very rugged. This was in July. Then this is our trip to Mbembe. When, when, when we got to, um, to Nkambe, we were looking for a four-wheel drive, and they told us, no, this is the only vehicle that can take you to Mbembe. And six of us with uh, Blaze were squeezed in this vehicle like that. So um, 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 be prepared to. The next very important issue, you may have all this money, arrange everything, make a good field team, but if you go to the forest and you don't give them food, I bet you, 
if you don't give them food, my experience over the years, my experience over the years, if you don't give few worker food, they will not work. Or they will collect, they will collect, they will, they will collect you a, some sort of data that, that you will never understand it. I don't know how it functions with the other taxa, but for plants, for plants, for my experience over 18 years, you have to give them food. They have to eat well. So wherever we go, we look for, for a cooking place like this. I, I mean, it was just lucky that, that we stormed into a hunting herd. And I told my guys, okay, this hunting herd, there's a stream close by, we have to set a plot here. And that's what we did. Yes, you need to see me when I'm going to the forest. After the equipment is food. So, and um, this, is how, this is how we collect data in the field. This is how we collect data in the field. Uh, there is somebody that is measuring and taking the, the diameter, using the diameter tape at uh, breast height. There is a recorder and there is somebody that paints the point of measurement. Since our plots are usually permanent, so that after, after three to five years, we can still go back to this particular plot to measure and start studying the dynamics, how the, the forest is changing over, over the years. Um, last January, I was discussing with town and our total. So something popped up. Because normally we used to we use maps, we map them. When we come back, we digitize them. But two of them said, no. Just put your GPS on track, and you track every, every single plan with the measure, you give a track, you track the plan, and um, you don't take the GPS point. Take the time. Take the time on the GPS. And because when you take the time and it's tracking, when you put it on, um, on map source, you see all the time. And now you can, you can get the time of measurement and their GPS point is easy. And I did that and it worked. It actually works. If you see, if you see my, my recorder, he's having a GPS on him. When he measures a tree, he gives the diameter, he looks at the GPS, he gives the time. So <clears throat> it's, it's really something to, to, to replicate. Data type. You have to know the type of data you want to collect. You don't just jump into the forest because you know that hey, you, are, you, you are studying this particular group of frogs. You have to collect everything, or you have to do collect data in a haphazard way. Are you collecting taxonomy data just for species presence or absence? Or will your data, after having the taxonomy information, will you relate your data into ecology or biodiversity? So those type of things you have to put in mind. But I bet you, if you just go to the forest, as a botanist, my experience over the years, if you go to the forest, that, okay, I just want to collect uh, species presence and absence, you will be losing a lot of data and wasting time. But if you collect more information, that information will help you to know the ecology of that area and to relate to relate the, 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 the species, the ecology, and the biodiversity of that area. So it's always good to collect more data while you're in the field. Now, who are you collecting the data for? Are you collecting the data for yourself as a graduate student, or are you collecting this data for yourself, but it's under an institution? Is this data for Limbe Botanic Garden? Is this data for the National Herbarium of Cameroon? Is this data for Tropical Plant Exploration Group? So, the, the data must be affiliated to a particular institution. Data must be affiliated to a particular institution. If you are a student at the University of Boya and you are doing a graduate study, then, and you know that your data is related, it has to be related to University of Boya. If you are a graduate student working for Tropec and doing a PhD at the University of Boya, you have to spell it out. This data, at the end of the day, is owned by Tropec, is owned by University of Boya. Now, documentation of species present and physical objects. As I said um, 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 earlier, do you just go in to take species presence or you have to take physical objects? It is good to take both of them. 
different species present in different habitats because that will help you to know the ecology of that particular um, area. Now, what are you measuring? Are you measuring diameter at breast height and tree height? How are you sampling? Are you sampling your plots in, in quadrats? In quadrats of 20 by 20? And what do you collect? Do you collect um, plant leaves, flowers, fruits, or you just collect and feel that you identify everything in the field, which is not possible for botanists? And um, um, how do you collect your data? And how do you identify the plants? If you see here, uh, this is one of our trip in um, Bembe uh, Forest Reserve. Uh, this lady is using um, a range uh, forestry 550 to get the tree height. And down here, this is Michael. He's trying, he's trying to survey to demarcate the, the plot into 100 by 100 and sub demarcating them into 20 by into 20 by 20. Here is Mambo Peter trying to press a uh, plant specimen. And this is Sangi Moses uh, collecting data and identifying plants. Now we'll drift a bit into Tropec. Um, Tropec is an NGO that um, I work for. And um, this group was actually initiated by me and Robin. Uh, it has seven members was created in 2010 um, under the Law Governing Association and Club in Cameroon. Our mission is to, to explore and document the different biodiversity taxa in Africa, but focusing on plan. Our specialty is plan, but we want to know what are the different um, um, biodiversity aspects that are found in Africa, and we can, we can help other scientists in documenting things like that. And um, <clears throat> one of our, our other objectives is, or mission is to train young scientists in biodiversity, ecology, systematic, and taxonomy uh, issues. I am sure we have about three participants here that they are actually like more or less product of Tropec, Blaze, Michael, and Lovett. So, <clears throat> and this is during one of our board meeting, Tropec members. How is Tropec organized, or what is Tropec doing? What is our interest? Our interest is to collect data on, is to understand the systematic and the taxonomy of plants in Africa, starting with Cameroon, and specifically the Cameroon Mountains, and understand the biodiversity of this, this area. We also do ecological work like setting one one hectare plot of different sizes and trying to understand the dynamics, how, how this particular forest that we're working, working in is changing over time. And um, <clears throat> we also have a component of analog forestry which is like, <clears throat> which is like, um, it's a, some sort of agroforestry. Yeah, so um, we, we, we are trying to put on a company like that, which is in place. We, the trip that I met in July with um, uh, Jacob in Dikume Balui was really successful because I went there and realized that the guys up there, they grew their own tea. They are producing their own tea. And when I came back a few weeks after, Michael went to Sri Lanka and did a training on uh, analog forestry and tea production. But when he came back, he, he, he told me, he, he was thinking, that, hey, where do we put this knowledge to? He brought me a packet of tea from Sri Lanka. And when he came to my house in the morning, I was drinking tea. My son said, hey, daddy, I want to drink dikume tea. Michael said, what is dikume tea? I explained to Mike, and Mike said, we are going there. This is what uh, we have to promote because I did a training in Sri Lanka last week. That's how we went to Dikume, and now we are actually working with them. Uh, our first product will come, it's already out, but we'll put it in the market next week. Um, 
they have good tea and we Tropec actually want to to promote it and want to use it as as a conservation strategy because we are interested in studying the biodiversity of that area mm -hmm. so and of course we 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 will we 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 we, we would like to be training students and um, setting up seminars like this that will bring people together, teach them on what we are doing. That is outreach. <laughs>